Hi, welcome aboard. Well, the Sanctuary Cove International Boating Festival each year always gives us some new product. And this year is no exception. In fact, because for the first time in four years or so, it's been a sunny show rather than a rainy one, it's broken all records as far as attendance is concerned. And also, whilst the displays may be a little down on previous years, the, the degree of new product and particularly of innovation is way up. So it certainly bodes well for the next decade as far as dedicated boaties are concerned. The equipment is becoming more sophisticated, easier to use, far more user friendly, and it also brings in elements of safety and economy as far as boating is concerned. Now, as we have each year for the last five years, we're going to show you some highlights of the 1993 Sanctuary Cove International Boating Festival, beginning with one of the most exciting new releases we've seen in the last decade or so in Australian boating. Now, I'm not sitting in a, a Nissan sports car, I'm sitting in a boat and this boat is called the Probe 2000. It was designed along the lines of the very latest aerodynamically designed uh, sports cars, international sports cars, and it has all of the attributes that you would expect from a, an extremely upmarket luxury sports car. It also has some very practical aspects as well. Now, the Probe, as you can see from these shots, is absolutely superbly styled. In fact, it's a total showstopper. To be quite honest, we've had to wait until late on the last day because there have been so many people around it that we quite simply couldn't get close enough to it to shoot it. So at least you can get a reasonable view now of what the probe looks like. John Eager has been a friend of ours for the last 15 years or so on, the, on Leisure World and he's renowned as one of Australia's most innovative and bold boat designers, particularly from the point of view of styling. He's always been dedicated to catamarans or power tunnels and he's always come up with boats which really are at the cutting edge as far as styling is concerned. And the probe is probably John's best work to date. We've seen the ocean treks, we've seen the power cats, but this probe really breaks new ground as far as styling and presentation is concerned. Now, you've had a look around the inside of it. There are a couple of things that you can't see. For instance, the entire passenger module is suspended on cast polyurethane elastomer mounts so that that takes the shock out of the movement in the boat. Over the next week or so, and the boat's tied up for the next four or five days on demonstration rides, it's been extremely well received. During the next week, we'll be shooting it on the water, giving you a full rundown of the entire presentation and particularly performance of the probe. So watch out for that on next week's show. But before that, let's take a look at a couple of the other exhibits. There was a time when the effort that you put into the steering wheel was transmitted to the motor or the rudder by cables over pulleys but as time's gone by and boats have become bigger, engines have become more powerful and requirements for cable controls have become more sophisticated, a whole new technology has sprung up. Now Ross Scrim of Marine Control Systems on the Gold Coast is well into this and as you can see from this system here, that's a steering set up for large boats, boats up to say 20 metres in length. It will cover, it'll control one or more rudders and there are also systems for controlling the engines but for people who own outboards, even small outboards, he has a very interesting setup. Outboards have become more and more powerful over the years and one of the problems is they generate a huge amount of torque and that torque is transmitted up the leg by the propeller into the engine and that tends to put pressure on the steering wheel. Now, single double cables, even the old cable system, can to a degree handle that and also by trimming the motor you can minimise the amount of torque but you still get feedback through the steering wheel. So Roche designed and manufactures in Australia his own small hydraulic steering system for uh, outboard powered boats, also applicable to stern drives but it works extremely well as you can see from that and of course these cables can be routed anywhere through a boat up to fly bridges, uh, out of the way behind combings etc. They don't move so you don't have any problems with connecting the steering wheel to the outboard motor. Now obviously if your motor is completely out of trim you you should have the motor trimmed and that's done by the little trim tab underneath the cavitation plate but for effortless steering, steering that's absolutely accurate and steering that's quite reasonable to install I might also add, it is designed and manufactured in Australia but it's extremely high quality and very reasonably priced, this is the only way to go, the Marine Control Systems outboard hydraulic steering system. You know no matter how stock your boat is, 
If you're serious about your boating, you're going to find, as you use it, some way in which you want to modify it or change it. And the marine industry has bred a, a, a whole population of craftsmen who do astonishing work with difficult materials such as stainless steel. Now, Phil Brown is such a craftsman, and recently he set up his own business making a range of stainless steel fittings all the way from salt water filters or, um, through to grab handles with a whole lot in between, including a magnificent game chair which is totally trimmed and fitted out with teak and that would do any boat no matter what its value was absolutely proud and also quite a fascinating jet ski trailer which is made from 100% stainless steel. There are fuel tanks, there are rod holders, there are anchor uh, brackets for the bow, cat eyes, uh, cat's heads if you like, there are uh, burly buckets, um, there is a huge range of uh, different products and this really only just scratches the surface of the number of things that Phil can make from stainless steel. Now he's based on the Gold Coast but he's able to make uh, specialised stainless steel fittings for people all over Australia so it certainly wor is worth looking at if you need that that craftsman made special fi fitting to make your boat that much more usable. Now one of the things that sets Phil's work aside from all other stainless steel workers on the Gold Coast is the fact that he has the only electro polishing bath on the coast and that's how he's able to get that superb almost chrome like sheen on all of his stainless parts.